we're going to have a look at the anterior ankle. So this is the lateral aspect of the screen and this is the medial aspect of the screen. And the best way of just finding the tendon of tibialis anterior, if you can't find it straight away, is just to get the patient to flex their foot up. And you can see that lovely big tendon, nice solid tendon there is tibialis anterior. If we just relax the foot down and place the probe in transverse section, then you can see the tibialis anterior in the middle. Now, I want you to explore what happens to tibialis anterior as we move up, which we don't always do. You can see this retinaculum on top, keeping that in the middle, keep tilting the probe. And what happens is this tendon actually goes inside the muscle and you can see this is the intramuscular tendon, just straightening it out, tilting the probe to avoid an isotropy. You can see this is the um, tibialis anterior intramuscular tendon and you can actually follow it all the way up until it starts to become smaller just there. As we come back down you really see the way that the muscle forms the tendon, keep tilting the probe and then you can follow it all the way back down to the anterior ankle. There it is sitting next to the tibia, the muscle belly. See the last few fibers of the muscle belly there? going in, going in, and now it's just the tendon. And of course we can follow that down really slowly. Take your time, keep it in the middle. And remember it does go a little bit more medial than you think. There's the Taylor dome. How do we know it's the Taylor dome? Because it's got that nice pyramid shape and it's got articular cartilage on top. Just follow that as we go down. Can you see I'm just losing a bit of contact so I just push down the probe and it actually goes quite medially and as you can see the tendon there. Now, if you lose the tendon, you can actually use an isotropy to your advantage to make it darker. Can you see there? And then we can continue to follow down until it goes on to its attachment point onto the medial cuneiform there. You can also spin on that and you can get a really nice long image as it goes onto the medial cuneiform. And then you can obviously follow that up approximately. So that's tibialis anterior. If we then move laterally, we should see a very small tendon. You've got the Taylor dome here, you've got articular cartilage, and you've got your dorsalis pedis. Now, can you see, I just turned the gain up a little bit. Can you see there's a little tendon just sitting there? That's tibialis anterior, so we're lateral to that. And it's got a very distal muscle belly. Now, I think that is extensor hallucis longus, but don't guess find out. If you just ask your patient to wiggle their big toe, yet yeah, you can see the muscle belly moving and the tendon. So we know that's extensor hallucis longus. Now, if we follow that up, we can see the muscle belly gets bigger and it almost forms a column. Can you see that column there as we go up? So you've got tibialis anterior here, muscle belly. You've got extensor hallucis longus here. And then you can see there's another column here which is gonna be your extensor digitorum, which we're gonna have a look at but let, in a minute. But let's just have a look. This is EHL. Now, can you see this column of muscle belly here? Now, if you're not sure, again, just ask the patient to wiggle their toe and look at that. You can see that column of EHL muscle belly working really nicely. You could then just ask them to dorsiflex and you get that tib, eight, tib ant muscle contraction, but obviously they all work together. So using your EHL, just to wiggle the toe really differentiates that. And then you can follow that tendon up proximally, which is a really good skill training thing to do. So we found Tiban, we found EHL. Now, what have we got more laterally? I'll just move my thumb a little bit. As we come back down, pick up that EHL again, just above the Taylor dome, tibia falls away, Taylor dome comes up. How do we know it's the Taylor dome? It's got articular cartilage. Now, if we just move laterally, we can see another little muscle belly here, and I think this is extensor digitorum longus, but again, don't think, don't guess, prove it to yourself. Because as we know, as we go further down, now extensor digitorum should split into four tendons. See a little bit of fluid coming out of the joint there. So as we look here, can we see four slips? Yes, we can, we can see one, two, three, four. Now I'm just going to tr just blow this up a little bit more so we can see extensor digitorum as it comes down, 
Can you see? One, two, three, four. Now, what have we got over here? Now, this is an interesting case. This is a normal variant. And this is, if you notice that you've got five extensor digitorums or you've got one more just tendon, a little bit more laterally, that's actually perineus tertius. Now, normally, this will then go down onto the fifth. So let's just have a look. Let's keep following it. Keep following it down. Keep following it down. Keep following it down. Keep following it down. And there it's going on to the fifth. So yes, this is perineus tertius. If you just want to confirm that, you can also go into a long section, which is a little bit more tricky, but look at that lovely image, perineus tertius. We can just fishtail that end of the probe and it's going into the fifth metatarsal there. So that's a nice example of perineus tertius. Remember the tip to remember that is have a look at extensor digitorum. There's Tiban, there's EHL, wiggle your big toe come over to extensor digitorum and actually in this case you can already see the perineus tertius but just confirm that come more distally one two three four hang on we've got five and that's perineus tertius there to scan the lateral ankle we first start at the fibula the fibula you can see on the screen here has the shape of a shark's fin. So the first thing to do is to find this shark's fin. As you move down distally, you see the tibia and the fibula coming close together. And as we slide off the distal end of the tibia, we start to see the lateral talus. And you know it's the talus because it's got articular cartilage on. This is now in the shape of a pyramid. So the talus is in the shape of a pyramid. We then move back up proximally until we see the distal end of the tibia. And then the key thing is to angle just this end of the probe. So we're actually fishtailing the probe, this end up towards the opposite knee. And you can see nicely the AITFL going between the two bones. To assess the laxity of this ligament, we use dorsiflexion. So if I gently and passively move the foot into dorsiflexion, despite the movement, you can see that the tibia and the fibula do not open up at all. So that ligament is doing its job. To find the ATFL, we then follow the tibia down distally until we see the Taylor dome. This is the lateral aspect of the Taylor dome with the articular cartilage. To find the ATFL, instead of pointing the probe up towards the opposite knee, we point this side of the probe down towards the big toe. So we keep this side still and point this one down until we see the fibro alignment of the ligament, which we can see really nicely here. And the, the ligament of the ATFL is between here and here. To assess the laxity of this ligament, this time we use plant affection. Make sure you put the thumb nice and close to the probe so you're controlling the foot and you can see the ATFL going tight and relaxed tight and relaxed. So that shows us that the ATFL is still preventing any unwanted movement. To assess the calcaneo fibula ligament, we're first of all going to pick the perineal tendons up, approximately five centimeters proximal to the lateral malleolus. You can see it's really important to use a lot of gel so we get good contact. Now this is perineus longus at the top and this is perineus brevis. You can see the muscle belly of perineus brevis. Perineus brevis sits right next to the bone and sits underneath longus. Now, as we follow the tendons down, it's important to tilt the probe to avoid an isotropy. So you can see perineus brevis tendon there, perineus longus on top, and you can see nicely the superior retinaculum as well. As we go down, as these tendons start to come away from the fibula, our eyes need to focus slightly further down underneath the brevis and the longus, which is here, the calcanea fibula ligament. And underneath that, we can see the subtalar joint. To assess this ligament fully, we need to do a dynamic assessment. So if we just put our thumb really close to the end of the probe, and if I just invert the foot, you can see it just lifts up the tendons on the top. So the ligament straightens, you can see the nice fibril alignment of the calcanea fibula ligament there. And if I stretch into inversion, you can see the ligament go really tight and that tells us that that ligament is intact. 
We can then follow it a bit further down. That's the subtalar joint underneath. So look, look for any fluid coming out of there. And as we come down, you see the brevis and the longus separate. You can see the brevis there just above the subtalar joint and the longus uh, to the right of it. If we follow the tendons down, obviously the peroneus longus goes underneath the foot uh, and you can follow the peroneus brevis all the way onto the fifth metatarsal. And we can follow that down in transverse section looking for any tendinopathic change or any issues with that tendon. And that's where it attaches onto the fifth metatarsal. And obviously you can have a look at that in long section as well. And to do that, we start above the ankle, about five centimeters, where we first of all identify a big tendon on the posterior side of the tibia, which is the tibias posterior. We follow that down, straight down, and we follow the tendon down until you see a concave groove uh, where this tendon finds its place. That's his landmark. And once you find that as your landmark, you stop there and then you angle the posterior side of your probe a little bit towards the heel. And if you do that correctly and slowly, you should be able to identify all the structures we're going to cover now. The first is the tibialis posterior that we already saw. Next to it is a very small rounded uh, tendon that is the flexor digitorum, longus. If you then further go posteriorly, you see the arteries and veins, and you can let them compress the veins. There you go, I'm pushing it down with a tibial nerve underneath it, and underneath that is the flexor hallucis longus. So within one picture, you get all these structures, and once you have them, you can trace them up and down, distally and proximal. So we refer to that as Tom, Dick and Harry, so tibialis posterior, uh, uh, flexor digitorum longus, and then the arteries and the veins, the nerve, and then the flexor hallucis longus. And that's how you do it. So once you can see a tendon that you are interested in and you have got your landmark, you can spin on it, you can go distal and proximal, um, and you can be confident that you're on the right spot. To assess the deltoid ligament, we first find the tibialis posterior. Uh, at the back of the medial malleolus. As we come round, we're gonna push the foot into full dorsiflexion, and as the tibialis posterior comes off the bone, if your eyes go underneath, you can see this very thick capsular band, and that would be the tibiotalar, or the posterior or deep posterior element of the deltoid ligament. And you can stretch it with dorsiflexion and you can relax it and you can get a good appreciation of how that's behaving. The middle band is the band of the tibia onto the calcaneum. So as we fishtail through, we can see the fibula pattern here of the, from the medial malleolus and it attaches on to the sustentaculum tali of the calcaneum and this would be the subtalar joint. So again, you're looking for these bands and you can stretch it with dorsiflexion there um, and some eversion. If we fishtail around the distal end of the probe, keeping the tibia in view, we should be able to find another band, which is the more anterior band, which we can see where it attaches from the tibia. And if we use a little bit of plantar flexion, you can see the band that goes from the tibia onto the talus. Now there is also some attachments onto the navicular, but here we can see the anterior band coming down and with a bit of plantar flexion, we can stretch that somewhat. Did you find that video useful? If you did, don't worry, we've got loads more videos for you. You can like our videos, you can make a comment, you can subscribe to our channel to get all of our new videos, and you can even join our membership. Good luck scanning. <laughs>